After getting caught out in a gale, we make it back to the dock where we leave Papau and return to Sydney with a car. Wind speed is going up to 35 knots! <laughs> After a quick flight back, we meet up with a mate for a final dive in Morton. Some old friends come to say goodbye. And we catch and cook some craze in an epic Chinese style prawn toast. Mm. Yum. It's meant to be 10 knots right now. And uh, I reckon it's about 30, 35. We were making our way back to our land base so we could prep the car for our return to Sydney. Unfortunately, the weather forecast was completely wrong and we were caught out building into 40 knots of wind and chop. Just come full circle we're coming back to exactly where we bought the boat when we first saw her when she used to be called true love now for power all done up it's going to dock right here well jesse's going to do it <sighs> always always a bit nerve-wracking that's all you now it's out of gear Okay, so we're all set, we're at the dock, and now I've got to get through this mega list so we can leave the boat for two weeks. After giving the boat a thorough clean, getting everything stowed and pickling the water maker, we were on our way to Sydney to drop off the car. A few hours into the drive, we were blown away by the amount of fire-ravaged bushland we'd been through. It went on for hundreds of kilometres. This was just the start of what would turn out to be the worst bushfire season Australia had ever seen. Having fun, Michael? Far out. Haven't had to do this for a while. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild how bad the traffic is here. And the smoke, all the smoke from the fires adds to that real city smog look. As we traded smoke for smog, it was a whirlwind tour where we attended two weddings and caught up with family and friends before flying back to Papau. So it's been two weeks. Pretty nervous now to um, come back to the boat. Hopefully we did everything right. Hopefully no one stole our tender. I'm really nervous about that. I think just because it's our baby and it's still really new. So fingers crossed, we'll find out. Still with it. There she is. Ah! No. Some sort of beeping sound. Sounds like a smoke alarm. Oh dear. Smoke alarm. CO alarm. It's pretty hot. Fire alarm. That's probably been annoying the neighborhood for a few weeks. So basically for preparation, chained this tender up, locked it up, took the engine off, put it inside. Decommissioned this fridge just so it wasn't working its butt off because it's super hot in here with all the windows shut. So that looks good, nice and dry, no mold in there. I think we'll get that cranking. I just put a cup of vinegar in there. Apparently that helps the uh, the smell and keeping mold out and all that stuff. The storeroom, everything's just been shoved in here. All the sup boards and eskies and fishing rods and stuff. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Very very happy. Just probably chill out we're both tired we actually got a flu so 
We picked up a head cold. I woke up with a cold this morning when we left Sydney. So thanks Sydney, I love you. To make sure that we didn't lose power at ears, we put a coin on the ice cube. Oh, it's pretty good. You put a coin on top of the ice cube and if you've lost power, um, that will be at the bottom of the ice cube or in the middle depending how long the power is off. So we know that everything's still good in there, nothing's been spoiled and uh, we can just keep eating it all. The following day, our mate Andrew arrived with his sea devil in tow. After hiding out from the wind for a day or two, meeting up with our patrons Jeff and Rao, we were heading to Tangaluma to anchor up. on board with his uh, really nice fishing hat. <laughs> it feels that good to be back home and uh, back in our, yeah, just back into the groove a bit. So we sailed up to Tangaluma. So now you're going to go for a full day. Go off off? Well, I hope so. It's meant to be, but it's flying a little bit now. But we'll see. So we're going to take Amod's boat, go up 25 miles from anywhere. <laughs> the water is blue. Come on. Did you even stab that thing? You didn't even kill him, mate. Seeing some nice wahoo when Michael decided to scare them off with this rookie long shot from the surface. It was a pretty quiet day, but we managed to land some nice mangrove jacks. And of course, a dive in Morton wouldn't be complete without a visit from a big fat bull shark.
After two close passes, Michael decided to get out and call it a day. After a few nice days of exploring and diving, we filleted the fish, cooked up a feast and said goodbye to Andrew. I'm going to make some prawn toast. Well, I've never ordered it and I've never made it, but I'm going to try it. I don't even have prawns. We've got a coral cray. Oh, we don't have prawns, but we've got crayfish. Just yeah. pull it down. We don't have prawns, but we've got these two cray tails from the other day. Just cut them open, get the meat out. A bit easier than the blue swimmers, huh? Oh, look at that, just all meat. I've already taken the poo line out. All right, Michael, what's cooking? You've been in the kitchen for about five hours now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've cut the meat out of the cray tails and I have cut up five cloves of garlic which is a bit more than That's two. That's fine, you can't have enough Five garlic. cloves of garlic, a big knob of ginger, maybe three or four big spring onions, a little bit of sugar, egg white to bind it all together, and then I'll just add a bit of sesame oil. Over there. That looks and smells bloody good. Mm. So we don't have an inverter powerful enough at the moment to power this, so... Generator. We have one coming, well, should be here this week. that good. I wish you could smell this. I'll cut the crusts off this white bread, spread a nice generous layer of this cray toast paste, um, sprinkle it with sesame seeds. Yeah, I'm going to try, try some with and without panko crumbs. I have to say I am pretty excited about this prawn toast. The, well, it's not prawn toast, it's lobster toast. I may have had a few sundowners, but it just makes the prawn or lobster toast taste even better. Smells like a Chinese restaurant in here, Michael. What's going on? How good does it smell? I'm so excited to eat this. It smells really good. Lobster toast, eh? I'm so excited. Can we try? Yeah, I'm waiting. Looks great. Mm. Smells amazing. Oh. <laughs> this is mine. Give me some. Try that. Mm. There's a bit of salt. Yum. Pretty good though. Oh my gosh. Crispy. There's a bit of soy sauce. Your face is so oily. <laughs> it's shiny as. That's crazy. <sighs> it's like a, uh, it's like eating a whole bucket of KFC <laughs> for yourself. Amazing, but the remorse is high. A delicious, but huge remorse. Um, oily, as oily. you can tell oily. by your face. Oily but good though. But yeah, it's not something you want to eat every... It's not going to be make your regular rotation, for sure. The flavour was amazing, but yeah, heavy. I would... There was no soy in that recipe. We were dipping the, mm. the prawn or the cray toast in soy afterwards, which was really good. But I think it could do with a couple of tablespoons of soy mixed into the actual Mixture. paste itself. Mm. But yeah, other than that... Not a bad way, something different when you're sick of eating garlic butter or whatever else we do in craze. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, enjoy. Join us next episode where we find some pippies and have an epic catch and cook. Good. That is delicious. Really? If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. We'd like to give a huge shout out to our patrons for their ongoing support and welcome aboard our newest members, Jim and Ashley. Cheers, guys. You yeah, weighed it. 14.40 pound. Oh, 1.44 pound. What? Six. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
What are you doing? I, I put too many ingredients in. Boys are back. What's well, a bet? They've forgotten something vital. Come on, Fins. Avon shot a nice mackerel today. Didn't get her on bridge. Doesn't care for that. <laughs> a purist. Look at these two. What have you got going on down there, Amon? I have got the f***ing... <laughs> I've got... <laughs> this is your mac and cheese <coughs> that I'm cooking for you because you're sick. Tack is learning a lot. He's, he's ridiculing, but he's learning a lot about how to cook basic. Oh my god. Oh, seasoning in the pan. Paprika. Oh. Did you I mean, plan that? Or if you, did you just find that? If you do it any other way, you're an idiot, basically. <laughs> What's in Ooh. there? Secret. Top secret. <laughs> basically, just, Max like salt and pepper. And <laughs> and then last minute, <laughs> oh, I found paprika. Now all you need to do is put some butter on it and hundreds and thousands. <laughs> And then invite all the other, all the other little boats out in the bay to come and have a little party. 